Good afternoon. Uh, my presentation um, refers to uh, the research that we have recently uh, undertaken for the exhibition reporting from Aguera and other waterfronts, one of the three special projects of the 2016 Architecture Biennale. This exhibition is uh, an analysis and a comparison of successful waterfront regenerations already realized worldwide with the aim to stimulate debate on the future of the most important and partly dismissed industrial area, areas in Italy. Uh, the waterfront uh, once sacrificed for industrial activities as partially deprived, deprived port cities of their relationship with the sea, often exacerbating phenomena of physical and social degradation in the surrounding areas. Over the past 30 years, the transformation of port following the introduction of container shipping and the subsequent displacement of logistic and port functions far from city center has opened up a unique opportunity to rethink our cities from inside out. The cities where the waterfront regenerations have been more successful share a resilient attitude. They have reinvented themselves, uh, reinforced with a new diverse character, beginning precisely with the enhancement of their relationship with the water that surrounds them. Schematizing, it is possible to identify four key moments in the evolution of ports and urban areas. The first moment, um, which goes from the origin until the end of 19th century, sees city and port uh, as a single entity sharing the same spaces. During the 20th century, ports required more space and ever greater depth to meet the renovated production and logistical needs. And this led to the physical separation of port functions from urban areas. From 60s to 80s, original port areas close to the city started to be underused because they were unable to fulfill the productive functions uh, required by the new technological development. In the end, since the 80s, there began a process of regeneration of abandoned waterfront spaces. From our point of view, the fundamental elements that enable the success of waterfront regenerations can be summarized into six factors that are able to frame cities' actions during the regeneration process. Through this framework, we have identified for each city the most important key of success. Cop Van Zuid is not just a transformation of an abandoned port area, but a project able to change Rotterdam's images as a wall. The key to success was the reunion of a divided city through the Erasmus Bridge, that together with a new strong transport, public transport accessibility, unlocked the huge potential of the area in achieving both, econ both economical and social goals. This image shows Cop Van Zuid area with its busy port before the relocation of the Arbor westward, which was the starting point for the underuse and the abandonment of this place. This is how the area looks like now, a new piece uh, of city uh, with a lively waterfront characterized by mixed use, development and attractive, attractive public realm. The wall connected directly to the core city center. The Dublin Docklands, with these uh, 500 hectares, is one of the bigger waterfront regeneration in, uh, uh, in Europe. Run by the Dublin Docklands Development Authority, the transformation has been developed through a public-private partnership approach with the aim to create a new urban centrality uh, in the former industrial area. During the 80s, the abandonment of the urban core by manufacturing activities result in changes in the social structure of Dublin uh, with high unemployment rates and increasing social deprivation. To achieve social regeneration targets, private developers have been obliged to provide at least 20% of the new residential development by uh, um, social and affordable housing. To increase job opportunities after a period of heavy unemployment, fiscal incentives raised remissions, rent and tax allowances, successfully attracted hundreds of international companies such as Google and Facebook, with, which significantly contributed to the development of a cluster of digital and technology enterprises. 
Euro Mediterranean is a huge transformation between the viewport and the central station uh, run by public sector development agency with a two-fold strategy, developing the side and ensuring that the project maintains a balance between economic growth, social equity, and respect for the environment. Until the 90s, a major part of Marseille waterfront was underused, cut it off from the city because of the physical barrier of the road and the place most affected by social deprivation. After the transformation, the same place has become the new center of gravity of the, for the world city. With more than 300 sunny days per year, a strong attention was dedicated to the design of public open spaces. They represent the places where urban design could bring quality, making the difference between a gloomy or an attractive and vibrant environment where people could uh, spend and enjoy their free time. In Italy, apart of a few isolated experiences, the regeneration of urban waterfronts is still one of the most important challenges to increase the attractiveness and quality of our cities. Venice and Naples, with all their differences, represent the two most important opportunities in this sense. Porto Marghera in Venice, after having reached during the 60s uh, his maximum expansion, providing job to more than 30,000 employees, started a slow and constant decline process. Today, the regeneration of the 1900 hectares is on top of the agenda both of, both of the municipality and the port authority. The main questions are about the uses to be allowed, the land remediation works, and the way to link this area to the rest of the city. There are all the potentialities to become a gate to Europe. But without action, the risk to remain only the Venice's periphery is still there. The story of Bagnoli in Naples is related to the Iva Company, one of the most important steel factories in Italy, which was closed at the beginning of the 90s. After a long period of stop and go for the regeneration of the site, things are starting moving further again. The challenge uh, here is about the regeneration of the area into urban and cultural uses but many questions are still unsolved. From the difficult connection to the city center to the way to attract private investors or what to do with the big and protected industrial archeological buildings. To conclude, almost all the successful in waterfront regenerations that have been analyzed have in common a series of key actions that could be taken into consideration to fit the debate on the regeneration of the Italian waterfronts. And those are the definition of a strong urban vision, uh, providing simplification of planning process, looking for engagement with local communities in design process, aiming environmental excellence, promoting high quality of public spaces, and targeting innovation. Thank you.